views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author Dr. Friedemann Schaub from Empowerment Radio as he addresses some of the most prevailing challenges in our day-to-day lives. Find out how you can use the power of your mind to overcome self-sabotaging patterns and build a solid foundation of confidence and self-respect. Learn cutting-edge tools and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. This is the time to empower yourself. Now, here's your host, Dr. Friedemann Schaub. Welcome to Empowerment Radio. Uh, it's another Wednesday, and uh, I'm excited to have today a very special guest right at the beginning of our show. But let me just first introduce the topic of today's program, which is about anxiety. But it is about a group in our society that suffers, I believe, the most from anxiety, at least statistically, which are women. Anxiety is an epidemic. 40 million Americans alone are diagnosed with a some form of anxiety disorder. And I believe the, the numbers are much higher. But not everyone goes to the doctor and not everyone is maybe finding the time or is really brave enough to look for help. So there is a lot of just trying to cope, manage, and self-medicate going on. Now, according to statistics, about 70% of the people that are diagnosed with anxiety disorder are women. And I can confirm this in my practice. This is about the number of clients I'm working with on a day-to-day basis to help them overcome fear and anxiety at the root level. Now, before we delve in deeper, what is the reason why women are anxious and why they may be more anxious than men? Or is it really true? Is it just a a number and men may not be brave enough to really reach out or admit to themselves or others that they have an emotional problem? Before we delve in, first, let me introduce my guest and colleague and friend who has set up an amazing um, telesummit, a telesummit that is for anyone who is in some kind of a caregiving capacity, whether it's professionally or on a just personal life. And since the caregivers of our society are usually women, This is exactly what you may have been looking for. And so let me bring her on, Ariana Gray. Thank you so much for just making this amazing offer and for hopping onto the show. Absolutely, Friedemann. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Now, tell us a little bit about this Telesummit. First of all, what it's called and what is it for? So this is the Transformational Healers Summit. And we're really focusing on supporting our listeners to break through burnout give their gifts, and love their life. I am extremely passionate that all of us that are in a helping capacity be inspired to not just suffer through the experiences or the the calls that we have, either because it feels like our our path or because our, our personal lives, families, situations require us to be helpers or, or care providers, um, that we really not go under the waves of burnout and stress, anxiety, fear that so often come with those roles uh, and that we really have specific tools to break through the burnout and to connect with our own gifts, the things that we're here to bring forward into the world and to bring them out in a way that we can really love our lives. And I was so thrilled to have you as a speaker on this summit. Uh, Friedman was actually one of the very first people that I reached out to when I was putting the summit together because uh, knowing you as I do, I know that not only do you have an incredible uh, array of tools for breaking through burnout, but you are a man who is giving his 
his gifts, and I also know loves his life. So uh, <laughs> you are one of our speakers and just a wonderful example of the kind of amazing professionals that are sharing, but not just at a technical level. You know, everyone in the summit is really coming from their own personal story, which I was really appreciative of you being willing to share in your interview. You know, why do we, why do we get interested in uh, caring and being a helping professional? Uh, what do we see our gifts as being? What's the journey of bringing out those gifts? And what does it take to really love our lives? And so that's the purpose of the summit as a whole, is to really infuse all of these caregivers and helpers and helping professionals out there, whether they're you know, counselors or doctors or nurses or teachers, or they're someone caring for a family member, or, you know, as you have said, Freedom, and so many women in our culture are in the role of caregiver somewhere or many different places in their lives. And I just am really passionate that we put a huge infusion of energy into these people so that they can not just do the work, but actually enjoy their lives and thrive. Wonderful, and I think it's much needed. And uh, when I put out the call for you in the summit, I got uh, quite nice feedback of people that said, you know, I just gonna forward this to my friend who is a doctor or who is a nurse or who is caring for the parents uh, that are elderly. I think it's something that just uh, a lot of people struggle with. And uh, we often just don't have necessarily the tools. Maybe sometimes there is also this idea we don't have the time. So what do you feel like are some of the things people can expect on the summit, some of the speakers, what they offer, what they focus on, their specific approach to overcoming burnout? What, what have you learned there? Well, when I was putting together this summit, what I did was gather together the people who I wish had been in my life when I completely burned out three years ago. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and so it's an array of amazing experts. We have been really blessed. Some luminaries like Joan Borisenko, who is a 17-time New York Times best-selling author who speaks to us about the stages of burnout and also about the invisible thread um, that runs through all of our lives and leads us to our creativity. We have um, Dr. James Dolly, who is a, a medical doctor who got tired of being completely, uh, um, I think his phrase was screwed over <laughs> by financial uh. investment professionals. And so he has really taken the world of how do we invest our money? How do we provide for ourselves in the future? And made it very understandable and simple. I, he feels like the big brother I wish I'd had who could talk to me about money and make me not feel like an idiot about it. Um, we have Marshall Goldsmith, who is one of the top rated executive coaches in the world. He is a coach for the CEO of Pfizer and the World Bank and the president of Mayo Clinic. And he really talks about the role of shame in getting in our mm -hmm. ways and steps that we can take to accomplish everything that we want in our life. And I could just go on and on. I am absolutely in love with all of the speakers that we have, but the topics are covered are everything from brain science to uh, dealing with trauma, mindfulness, yoga, uh, food, mood, and nutrition, uh, how to really connect with our soulful work and bring our gifts out, uh, finding our vulnerability and courage in our roles as helpers. And, you know, Freedom, and you spoke so wonderfully and for me completely fascinating um, about the role of our unconscious in fear and anxiety. And so at some level, all of these different speakers are talking about fear and anxiety because it's a really natural thing that happens for all of us when we're in a position of responsibility, particularly when we're continually in a role of responsibility. Fear and anxiety come up. And, you know, you and the other speakers have so eloquently shared specific tools, wonderful theory, but also really specific tools on how to work with that fear and anxiety and transform that so that we are able to connect with our own gifts, our own joy, and really have lives that are um, meaningful to us. And so the speakers are a wide variety. We have people that are talking about the use of art and even dance in life, mm -hmm. which had me laughing when our speakers was talking about dancing in her kitchen. You know, <laughs> we're not talking high art necessarily here. Um, uh -huh. So it's really an infusion of all of the different areas that as a caregiver of some type, you know, your listeners could allow in to really give them some support, give them some energy, maybe some tools and, and just a, a ton of reinforcement that what they're doing matters and that they really are making a difference in the world. 
Now, how do people sign up? Because this sounds just amazing. And I really love how you summarized it and whet our appetite. So how do people find this summit? And when does it start? How long does it uh, last? What can we do to hop on? <laughs> well, I encourage you all to hop on. You're going to uh, go to transformationalhealerssummit.com. That's transformational, T-R-A-N-S-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N-A-L, healers, H-E-A-L-E-R-S, dot com. Summit. Summit, <laughs> Summit, sorry, sorry. Transformational Healers Summit. Get into the spelling and I lose my brain. <laughs> healers Summit, S-U-M-M-I-T, dot com. Um, and All in you one can, word. All in one word. All run together. Transformationalhealersummit.com, online. And um, you can opt in there. We actually started yesterday. And started means that for one week, each day, you'll get an email that has links to three interviews. The interviews are about half an hour long. And mm -hmm. you can listen to them anytime you want for the next 48 hours. So the initial ones are still available. And we will continue uh, through 22 amazing speakers that you can listen to. And it's completely free. And it's at your convenience whenever would be a good time for you to listen to these speakers over this next week. And I really encourage everyone to come join us because there's nothing to lose. It's not going to cost you anything but, you know, the, the, the email and the clicking in time that it takes you. And I know that you will find many speakers here that are going to be giving exactly what you need to get you through whatever it is that you're facing right now and really help you feel empowered and inspired in the work that you do. And what happens after the 48 hours? Uh, after the 48 hours, then the interviews will be um, mm. shut down. So we want people to really listen to those right away. We're looking right now at some possibilities of being able to make those available uh, to people. But for right now, they've got those 48 hours. So you really want to jump on that and get in. And so you can listen yeah. to those uh, right away. And since we started yesterday, definitely jump in right away because you don't want to miss uh, any of our day one speakers. Joan Borisenko is absolutely amazing. Um, Jennifer Sneeden talking about uh, how to build practices and lives and livelihoods that really are financial, uh, financially abundant and then using psychotherapy and art in our lives. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it's they've got 48 hours to listen. They've still got time to get in on the very first day and we would love to have you come and join us. Well, I'm sure a lot of people feel already antsy and excited and probably turn off the show and sign up for the summit. Please don't wait a little bit before you sign up, but uh, I think it's just a great gift and service that you offer. I know it takes such a lot of time and energy to put such a summit together. I mean, people completely underestimate how much effort it takes just to call these people and connect to them and uh, then interview them and uh, get the recordings. I mean, I don't know how many hours you did and hopefully you didn't get a burnout and you prevented yourself <laughs> from getting one by listening to everything the speakers uh, shared. But I want to just thank you in the name of all the people that are going to benefit from the summit. And uh, I wish you uh, really all the best for that and uh, for the future. So thanks again. And um, just give us again the URL, the, the website, so that people for sure can sign up. Absolutely. You can join us at transformationalhealerssummit.com. That's transformationalhealerssummit.com. Friedemann, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with your audience and also to have done this amazing interview with you. For your listeners, they get to hear a little bit more of your backstory in the interview that we do. And it's just a pleasure to be with you. And I'm really excited to hear the rest of your show today because I think this is a really important topic. Thank you. All right. Well, take good care. And when we will come back, we will talk about women and anxiety and why this is such a big issue that needs to be addressed and cannot be forgotten. So stay tuned. We will be right back. If 
you're dealing with fear and anxiety, you've probably noticed that the more you fight these emotions, the stronger they seem to get. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, explains that instead of suppressing, we need to identify and resolve the deeper, subconscious root causes of fear and anxiety. His personal breakthrough program has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. To learn more, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com and schedule your free consultation with Dr. Schaub now. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Talk Radio. Discover the healing medicine from the giant monkey tree frog, Cambo. Cambo practitioner Ginny Rutherford and professional psychic Todd Rolson have come together for lively discussions of alternative healing medicines from the Amazon. Ginny and Todd bring you Cambo Talk Radio. Tune in each Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific to hear from guests all over the world with real life stories and the medicinal benefits of Cambo. For more information, visit CamboKiss.com. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Brand consultant Jen Morgan is here with Radically Distinct Radio to help you take control of your future and maximize your brand's power to produce results. Whether you're an individual trying to reinvent yourself and launch a new venture, or you're an executive trying to reposition your company to modernize your sales and marketing programs, Jen Morgan and the Rad Method empower you to play to your strengths and show up in the world as your most powerful brand. To learn more, go to jenmorgan.com, that's Jen with two N's, morgan.com, or call 206 970 253 Welcome back to Empowerment Radio. We are talking about women and anxiety. And uh, as I mentioned before, anxiety is not only an issue. Uh, like an epidemic issue in our society, it is especially affecting women in a two-to-one ratio. And the question many people have been asking themselves, why? Why is it that women seem to suffer more from anxiety than men? And you know, there are, of course, many theories about it. Maybe women are just more in touch with their emotions. Maybe they are more likely to admit that they need help or that they have an issue. There is some neurological data that suggests that there is a part of the brain, the insula, that is connected to empathy. Now, I thought this was pretty interesting that this part is basically mimicking what other people are feeling that we are talking to. So women are observing someone in pain or someone who is struggling or is anxious, and their insula, this part of the brain, is pretty much activated is lighting up. But in contrast to men, it stays lit up. So women are able to really relate for a longer time to other people's stories and their troubles and their struggles, whereas men are quickly turning their insula off and and going to other parts of the brain that are more about problem solving. And how many times have we heard as men from our partners that they just want to be listened to and not to be told what to do or how to fix 
the issue. And, and I think that's, you know, one explanation of why potentially women are just feeling more anxious because they may feel and entrain more to the anxiety of others. And they may also feel easily overwhelmed by what is going on around them, simply because there is, again, this <clears throat> stronger empathetic component. And then there is the, the fact that men seem to be better in compartmentalizing than women, which is connected to what I just said, that, that men just can shove an issue aside and focus on something else, whereas women often keep the bigger picture and uh, try to keep tabs on everything and at times also just get stressed and overwhelmed. Now, I personally don't like generalizing because I think it's just too easy to simply make a judgment and a deduction and say this is how it is and then put a subject or a group of people into a little box and tuck them nicely away in our opinions. I think it's more important to be open and see, well, maybe we all have an aspect of a feminine and a masculine inside of us, and maybe every person is anyhow very unique and therefore needs to be also seen and addressed in that unique way. And I also think the more important question, since anxiety is not a competition, who does it more, who does it less, who does it better, who does it worse, Anxiety is actually really a challenge. It's a struggle. And I think the bigger question we have to ask ourselves is why? Why are more and more women anxious? And I want to focus on women today because I believe there are reasons why women are anxious that are particular to women and they need to be addressed and they need to not be forgotten. And I think men and women together need to start resolving this anxiety epidemic among women. Now, I want to ask you, the listener, to just send us a text through or through the chat box on Transformation Talk Radio uh, website or call in the number, which I always have not ready. What is it again, Justin? Give us a number. The call in number is 888-418-6890. Say it again, please. <laughs> Absolutely. one 888 Four one eight six eight nine zero. Wonderful. Thanks, Justin. Justin is our producer. Hey, no problem. And so if you can just call in and tell us your opinion. Why do you believe women are more anxious? Why are you maybe more anxious? And if you have any insights or also maybe solutions, let us know. We would love to hear from you. Now, there is no way to talk about women and anxiety without also looking at the history, the history of suppression of women. Now, some people, some historians say that history started with the uh, invention of the plow, which I think is quite interesting. Apparently, once the plow was invented, men had some kind of a, you know, a dominance because they were able to produce more, we're able then to have more to also share on the market and to barter for. And so that created this sense of I'm in charge, not because men were smarter or wiser or anything like this, but because they had more upper body strength. Now, that may be one explanation, but there are certainly also explanations that uh, can be found in religion. And you know, you're just looking at uh, the women being depicted as the original sinner, or I you know, just read uh, the Bible phrase that says that women are supposed to be quiet in church and uh, not to speak up. I mean, there was an ongoing suppression of women that uh, has been occurring since hundreds and hundreds of years. And even though that has on some level changed. And, uh, you know, for example, the, the right to vote is almost 100 years old now. Certain things haven't changed. When you look into the inequality of salary, when you look into the inequality of representation in management, in politics, in that regard, it's still 
a man's world. And it's still the men that are dominating the women and the women that are often just forced to take less or forced to be quiet or forced to somehow basically uh, shut up and keep up. And that is something that I believe creates a lot of anxiety and a lot of struggle inside. Now, even more seriously is that this suppression, this, some people call it the war on women, has also created a violence, a history of violence against women. And when I did some research on the program, I was frankly shocked about the percentages of worldwide violence against women, which I wasn't that aware of. An estimated 35% of women worldwide have experienced either physical or sexual violence at some point in their life. And some studies say that in some countries, this number goes up to 70% of women. It's estimated that of all the women who were victims of homicide globally in, this was in 2012, almost half of them were killed by either their intimate partners or by family members. And this is compared to about 6% in men at the same year. One in 10 women has reported to have been cyber bullied, cyber harassed, and especially in a sexual unwanted, explicit way. And this is especially uh, young women that are victims of that cyberbullying. And then there are, of course, other topics and other horrible things that are occurring in the world, like sex trafficking, female genital mutilation, child uh, brides. All of those things are just showing that worldwide, women and children, girls, are victims of a horrendous, atrocious uh, violence and suppression. And there is something we globally need to do by shedding a light on it, by becoming more aware of it. And I think it's interesting, and not to digress in politics, but it's interesting that it was acceptable for us to have a man being elected into pres as a president who is obviously um, not necessarily the most kind and respectful to women, in fact, who has been treating women uh, very misogynously. And at the same time, there was a rejection of a woman who is and would have been uh, a great president and would have been someone who may have really been a voice for the suppression of women. But this is just something that I personally feel we need to closer look at. What can we do as a society to stop this violence and this oppression of women, and therefore also alleviate some of the anxiety women have been dealing with for such a long time. Many of my clients tell me that it's not something people usually talk about, that as a woman living in a big city, there is a constant fear of going out, for example, at night, uh, just uh, in a dark alley, of not really knowing if it's safe, not really knowing when you go into the parking garage if someone's gonna attack you from behind. Women are vulnerable. Women are definitely uh, more vulnerable with, uh, than men and therefore need to be also more protected and protected in a way that they are respected, protected in a way that they are also uh, looked after and protected in a way that they are empowered. And all of those things we will talk more about after the break. So stay right tuned and please call in if you have any comments, any insights, any suggestions on anxiety and women. We will be right back. Tune in. 
in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life. Each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. You, yes you, can be the highest version of yourself. Wellness coach and natural beauty expert Dr. Agnes Renkel is on a mission to help you play the game of your life. Win in vibrancy, health, and beauty. Because you deserve it. Dr. Agnes goes beyond the limits in her personal coaching sessions to revolutionize health and wellness. Now is the time to unleash your true power. For more information, visit dragnesfrankel.com. Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author Dr. Friedemann Schaub for Empowerment Radio and learn breakthrough solutions to switch out of survival mode and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. Tune in the first and third Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific to Empowerment Radio with host Dr. Friedemann Schaub on Transformation Talk Radio. Visit the fear and anxiety solution.com to learn more. Hi, this is Carol Dorian here to tell you about the new and improved spiritual diagnostics coming to you every Tuesday at 2 p.m. starting April 25th. We will be having new amazing guests. We will have new spiritual topics for the new year. So look out for our new revamped show, Spiritual Diagnostics, Psychic Answers and Spiritual Solutions. April 25th at 2 o'clock. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. Welcome back to Empowerment Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Friedman. And if you want to find out more about the work I'm offering and how it can help you to overcome fear and anxiety at a deep subconscious root level and therefore find also a greater sense of your own power and find that you can build a stronger foundation of confidence, inner peace, and Ability just to live more from your true authentic self, go to my website, thefearandanxietysolution.com. There you can find my programs, the book, the individual session information, all the things you may want to know on how to finally get out of the grip of anxiety that may have held you back for such a long time. Now, before the break, we talked about women and anxiety and how the history of suppression and, and violence has something to do with why women, maybe even historically, feel more anxious. And it's really interesting when you think about it, 50% uh, of our world population are women and, and theoretically women could do fine without men. I mean, we, as you know, women could propagate and have children without men. Science allows all of those things these days. Men couldn't really survive without women, but somehow who is in charge and somehow who is still treating women as less than. And, and this is something that Judy from Portland writes. She says, why women are anxious? Sexism, sexism, sexism. Women and men need to be clear that sexism is a real and systematic oppression. It is present and it's continuing 
and it's strong despite the gains that have been made in some places. Women, especially in younger generations, need to know the term sexism and understand it. It's not a thing of the past and goes away and goes way beyond gender inequalities. They also need to understand how women internalize sexism inside themselves, start believing that the sexist lies that have been aimed their way and then act against their own best interests. And I think Judy makes a really good point. I mean, there is a general, I think, confusion also of the role of women and men in general that creates anxiety and that creates a sense of pressure in women that may be a pressure to please, a pressure to perform, a pressure to compete. And, and all of those things can create more anxiety. So thank you, Judy, for this remark. Now, besides the, the violence and besides the sexism, uh, there is also just the day-to-day -day pressure. The day-to-day -day pressure in life that for many women is creating this sense of stress and overwhelm. Many women are, are basically uh, trying to fulfill a dual role in life. There is the, the role of having to make money to make ends meet. Uh, many couples just realize that life is so expensive, especially in big cities, that both have to work. But as soon as they come home, they also have to fulfill the, the role of the housekeeper, the, the role of the mother, the role of the cook, the cleaner, and all those things. And, and men have so far, statistics shows it, and uh, clients tell me about it, they don't really have so far really stepped up to help their spouses. And again, I'm not generalizing, but we have to see that these traditional roles, even though women are asked to do more, especially when it comes to having a career and having to make money, that these traditional roles are still somehow ingrained. And that easily creates a sense of overwhelm and a sense of just feeling no matter where you're in and what you do, no matter what role you're stepping in, you, you don't really feel you ever have done a good enough job. And this is one of the complaints I often hear from my clients that they feel they are not a good enough mother, they cannot really measure up uh, at work, they cannot really uh, be uh, someone who keeps the house in the order they think they should, and so on and so on. Now, at work, one of the pressures, which again, I mentioned before, there is certainly also the this uh, sense of being, you know, maybe looked down upon or not really being represented well or having a uh, lesser salary than, than the colleagues. But then there's also the pressure that a lot of women tell me that they feel they have to somehow work harder and be more perfect than their male counterparts in order to be able to compete. It's almost like as if just being a woman is already uh, you know, a strike against you. And so they feel that pressure. And once they do feel they have actually established a sense of maybe respect or success, there is this common imposter syndrome, which makes women feel as if, well, somehow I'm going to be found out. Somehow this cannot be true that I'm really that successful. People will eventually question and doubt me. And, uh, and that, again, creates a lot of fear and anxiety of ultimately losing or failing and uh, being judged and criticized. Speaking about judgment and criticism, there is also this enormous expectation on how a woman is supposed to be and to look like and to appear like. I mean, the media starts already early to just tell our, you know, our teenagers, even the children, that there are certain things you have to do and certain clothes you have to wear and certain uh, looks you have to have, and this just continues on. There is this external expectation, and if you don't really comply to that expectation, as a woman especially, you know, you feel not good enough, you feel not fitting in, you feel not... Uh, you know, being able to, uh, you know, measure up to others. And, and that, once again, creates pressure, especially in a society that is quite 
use of this. A lot of the, the women that I talked about this uh, a few weeks ago are also afraid and anxious about aging because they feel that as soon as they're hitting 50, they are starting to become invisible. They are starting to become irrelevant and they do almost feel like, well, they don't exist any longer because nobody really pays attention. And, and that is something that uh, Susie actually writes from the UK. She says that in addition to what uh, you just said, I'd like to suggest that perhaps one of the reasons older women suffer from anxiety is that statistically they are more likely than men to end up living alone and in financial difficulties. If you visit care homes, they are far more heavily populated by women than men, and often their retirement income is less than their male counterparts. Loneliness and social isolation and a lack of, lack of funds to help redress these issues can give rise to negative cycles of, of feeling vulnerable and anxious. And I, and I think you're absolutely right, Susie, that this is also a part of our society that is easily overlooked and struggling so much with that sense of hopelessness and anxiety and maybe that day-to-day -day stress to, you know, not know how they may be able to afford things and uh, that loneliness and not feeling that support from the outside. It's almost as if there is a part of our society pushed aside and forgotten. And uh, again, this is up to us to make changes in this regard. Now, it's one thing to be aware of the anxiety, and I'm sure there are other uh, aspects uh, that I haven't talked about that create anxiety about uh, in women, and uh, there may be other uh, maybe uh, just pressures, expectations. Uh, beliefs that cause this anxiety. But there is one thing about looking at the problem, and maybe because I'm male, what's the solution? What can we do? And I believe that there are things we can do. Of course, you know, this radio show cannot fix the anxiety epidemic, especially among women. But what I would like to talk about in the next segment is just certain things that you, as a man or a woman, can already start practicing and doing right now to shift out of the survival mode of anxiety and start really creating a greater sense of harmony and balance in your home, in your environment, in your family. So stay tuned. We will talk more about this when I'm back. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Do you want to relax more, feel happier, and be more confident? Do you want to have more success in your life? Dave Dodge has some easy, effective methods to help you release your anxiety, worry, fear, depression, and even physical pain. Tune in to Stress Buster Radio with Dave Dodge every second Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. For more information on how Dave can help you release your stress, visit StressBusterRadio.com. Skype and phone sessions are available. 
If you're dealing with fear and anxiety, you've probably noticed that the more you fight these emotions, the stronger they seem to get. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, explains that instead of suppressing, we need to identify and resolve the deeper, subconscious root causes of fear and anxiety. His personal breakthrough program has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. To learn more, visit TheFearAndAnxietySolution.com and schedule your free consultation with Dr. Schaub now. What is a brilliant culture and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. Tune in to Dynamics of Diversity Radio, scripting the new narrative for immigration with leading experts, Kripa Upadya and Steve Tanijo on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This show will remove the noise that often accompanies discussions on this topic and share a new perspective on the dynamics of immigration and diversity, ever reminding us that together we are all at the core of innovation, excellence, and positive change. Visit OrbitLawPLLC.com for upcoming topics. Women and anxiety. Welcome back to Empowerment Radio. What can we do? What can we do to deal and overcome this epidemic? Uh, let's talk about first what we men can do. And I think one of the things we can do is just to train our empathy and our compassionate parts in our brain. And rather than trying to fix something, let's start listening to the women in our lives that are struggling. And let's start to put ourselves into their shoes and understand more what they're actually going through. As men, we have really no idea what women on a day-to-day -day basis are experiencing. And maybe we don't want to know, just like we don't necessarily want to know what it may feel like to, to bear a child. But the truth is, we need to know. We need to understand what women are feeling, what they're struggling with. And then we need to, together, help women to become equal and feel safe and feel that they are supported in the society. And this starts at home. So rather than you know coming home from work and putting the feet up and opening a cold one and watching TV while the woman is in the kitchen and uh, fixing dinner, let's help, let's support, let's just be a team and not try to keep up these traditional roles that ultimately are outdated. I mean, we are living in the 21st century and there is no need to hold on to roles that have been maybe started a thousand years ago. Now, another, I think, important aspect is to confront the abuser. There are so many families, just in my clientele, that have in their environment, whether it's a friend or a, a family member, someone that they know is at least emotionally abusive and sometimes even physically abusive to their spouse. And so many people don't want to interfere. Well, maybe it's a spouse that says, oh, no, no, don't rock the boat. Uh, let's just keep the peace. Or maybe they feel like, well, no, we shouldn't do this because uh, we don't want to necessarily interfere or cause trouble. But that is exactly why the bully and why that uh, the person who is the abuser can continue to do and control the way they used to do it. So we need to step up when we see there is violence, when we see there is abuse, we need to speak up and we need to help the person that is the victim. Now, as women, it is important for you, if you have been abused, maybe in your childhood, to really take it serious, to understand that if you were the victim of molestation, if you were the victim of abuse, not to question that's what happened to you, not to tell yourself like so many do, oh, 
I don't really know if this happened. Maybe I'm making it up. Maybe this is just a dream. Maybe I'm trying to blame someone. No, step up and stand up for yourself and, and really make a decision that you need to resolve the trauma of your past because otherwise it will haunt you for the rest of your life. Your subconscious will stay in a self-protective mode, in survival mode until you're healing it. And this is where, especially the work with the subconscious that I'm offering can be very helpful and very supportive in this regard. Also, learn to set boundaries. Learn to set boundaries internally and externally. Speak up on your behalf. And I found a very nice note by Natasha Dern of MyDailyVibe.com. She says, for every woman who holds the people in her life accountable, teaches them to be mindful in the future of thought, word, and deed, every woman says this is unacceptable to her lovers, friends, and family. She helps to straighten out the fabric of her being and that of the collective. And I think that's a very powerful message because ultimately it teaches you that this is something that can start in your small circle and ripple out through the entire society. Now, lastly, what I find is really important, and I mentioned this before, empowering women. I believe so many women have forgotten what it means to be in the feminine power, what it means to be connected to their authentic self. And what that means basically is that there is a, there is a need to refocus, to recenter and remember that she isn't, and this is certainly true for men too, but especially for women, she isn't just defined by her outer world, by her accomplishments, by the things that she's doing, the to-do list that she's fulfilling, but there is more to it. And for that, it is so crucial to take time for oneself, to just start meditating, reflecting internally, journaling and, uh, and really looking inwards. Because if we don't do that, we eventually just lose touch with who we really are. We don't feel at our center. We don't feel connected to our truth. And there will be certainly a radio show I will do in the future, which is about the so-called divine feminine and divine masculine power. But one of the things that I just really love about the divine feminine, which is, I believe, underappreciated also by women, and which causes then this kind of uh, stress and anxiety, are the powers of patience, the power of allowing, the power of just knowing that sometimes it's not about forcing or controlling or chasing. It's just about also being in a place of knowing there is a right time and a right place, just like during pregnancy. After the conception, there is a nine month period where it is about trusting, where it is about just allowing things and new life to unfold. One of the feminine powers is also intuition, which is not about intellectual rationalizing, but really just having an inner sense of what is right and what are the next steps and what feels good. And many women that I've been working with that have been dealing with anxiety and trauma, they admit to themselves that they have been overriding their intuition, that they haven't been really connecting to that, what their heart and that deeper sense of self were saying. And then there is also that patience and compassion and empathy that is so easy for women to have with others but it's really hard to have for themselves. So redirecting these feminine powers towards oneself and really just feeling connected to that calm confidence that is different than that what men are symbolizing and just allowing to be in that place. That is, you know, a beautiful difference to the male energy, but it is maybe more powerful and certainly for me more magical than what men usually can offer. So just having that confidence back will be and is, I think, a, a wonderful way 
to also alleviate some of this anxiety. And, and again, this Natasha Dern author wrote a very nice line about this authentic power of, of this divine feminine aspect. She says, the authentic power is about cultivating your innate divine qualities that affirm your life, your identity and your well-being as a woman. You shine naturally when you're aligned with your divine femininity and all who cross your path sense this mystical radiance. This draws people to you, not because you're wearing the most expensive dress at the party, but because the energy that you exude picks curiosity or makes people feel amazing in your presence. They can't get enough of you. And remember, you haven't have done anything. You're simply being yourself. So staying in that power, staying in that confidence and knowing that when you are in that place, people respect you. They want to serve you. They want to support you. They feel that there's something unique and special about you in every woman. I believe, and I saw in countless cases in my clients, has that power, has that center, that core. It's just a matter to stop looking for the outside for confirmation or for a sense of approval or a sense of permission, but really looking on the inside and finding that that truth, that authenticity is the gift that you as a woman can share with the world. So... Thank you very much. I know this show was flying by and we often just are able to touch on different aspects. Unfortunately, this topic or fortunately really deserves much more time than we had, but I hope it made you think about and reflect about what happens with anxiety in women and whether you're a man or a woman that you have listened to the show, try to make a difference, try to address this epidemic from your heart. And I believe when we have less anxiety in the world, we also have more room for peace and happiness. Until next time, I'm your host, Dr. Friedman Schaub. Thank you very much for listening in and just uh, being on that quest to making yourself and the world a better place. Goodbye. You've been listening to Empowerment Radio with Dr. Friedman Schaub. Join Dr. Friedemann the first and third Wednesday each month at 11 a.m. Pacific as he addresses some of the most prevailing challenges of our daily lives. Discover how you can use the power of your mind to overcome stress, anxiety, and overwhelm and create a solid foundation of confidence and self-esteem. Learn cutting-edge tools so that you can approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. To learn more about what Dr. Schaub can do for you, visit the fearandanxietysolution.com. 